Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I just wanted to thank everybody at Supersonic, particularly Jacques and uh, Rich and Kurt, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, and it's particularly poignant tonight because uh, I didn't realize that uh, we were going to go uh, give a special award to Barry Goldberg because I happen to be an ex-fellow of uh, Barry and Larry's. And I'm very honored to be uh, an ex-fellow there. And I really thank them because they helped me a lot with my career. So without further ado, is this working? Yes, it is. First of all, uh, you might wonder who I am since I don't write many papers and I don't do a lot of speaking about elastography or uh, uh, ultrasound at national meetings, but I do a lot locally. Uh, we actually have a, a very large practice in southwest Connecticut uh, in Fairfield County. Uh, we have uh, lots of uh, new equipment. Uh, we count amongst the new equipment, you can read for yourself, uh, 13 supersonic uh, explorer units. Uh, we also have uh, uh, two, three Tesla magnets and some multi-slice uh, CTs. We just put in some 64 slice. So we're very into technology in our practice. And we did a lot of vetting when it came to a new ultrasound unit. Uh, we service two hospitals. We have seven outpatient centers. And we do uh, approximately 500,000 exams a year between the two hospitals and our practice. Go, whoops. Go back the other way. Who in my joke? This is uh, President Clinton congratulating me on buying all the uh, Explorer units, by the way. So. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to go through some of the referrals that we get. I took uh, the, uh, the names of the physicians and just put uh, initials, not that you would know who any of them were, but just in case they got upset at me. Uh, there are uh, gastroenterologists, internists, infectious disease physicians. Uh, since we started doing elastography, it's mostly been word of mouth, uh, but it's been fueled by something that uh, I will get into in my next slide. But as of November 16th, we've done about 106 cases. Now, uh, the fuel for this has really been hepatitis C. And uh, Gilead, as you may know, uh, now has therapy. For hepatitis C, it's very, very expensive. It's about sixty-five dollars to $80,000 for the course of therapy. And uh, the prognosis and the management of hepatitis C relies on the degree of liver fibrosis. So prompt treatment in patients with advanced fibrosis or Metavir scores of three to four are indicated, and uh, they strongly consider treatment in patients with scores of F2. Now, just a little bit about liver disease and cirrhosis. It's a major health problem in the U.S. and worldwide. Alcohol abuse and viral hepatitis are actually the most common causes. But NASH, or uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, is emerging as another significant etiology. Uh, autoimmune and treatment-related diseases, such as methotrexate, can cause liver fibrosis as well. So they shouldn't be forgotten. There's about 700,000 deaths worldwide from cirrhosis, about 30,000 a year in the United States. Treatment options are being used and developed, but they're very costly and they depend on accurate staging of liver fibrosis. Liver biopsy has been the gold standard, but it's invasive. There's a risk of bleeding. Uh, it's painful. It's not a lot of fun to have one. And it examines only a very minute fraction of the liver, something like uh, 1 50,000th of the liver. So it can miss, under, or overestimate the extent of disease. The supersonic shear wave imaging uses real-time shear wave elastography to evaluate the liver for fibrosis. It uses acoustic radiation force produced by ultrasound in tandem with an ultra-fast imaging platform using transient elastography. And this is combined to produce a quantitative assessment of compliance with significantly less dependence on the person scanning. So it's much less operator dependent. And it can be useful to actually guide location for biopsies if necessary. The technique we use in general is a uh, broadband uh, uh, 6 megahertz convex probe. We generally obtain one elastogram from the left lobe, which is in contradistinction to how some other people do it. But we do one from the left lobe, and we do multiple uh, images and assessments of the right lobe. Uh, I haven't found that there's been a lot of artifact from the aortic pulsations. And a lot of our uh, IR people actually use a sub approach to biopsy of the liver. 
So uh, it, it, it seems to, to work out for us. Uh, we do correlate the results, and it just seems that what we're getting from the right lobe corresponds with the left lobe. Uh, we can obtain uh, additional values in, in other areas as well. Uh, the measurements are obtained during suspended breathing. Uh, we look for areas without any intervening uh, non parenchymal structures, so we don't want to image blood vessels or the gallbladder, et cetera. And that's one of the unique features of uh, real-time shear wave imaging is you can actually see where you're sampling. Uh, we try to get within six centimeters from the liver capsule, but not too close to the capsule. The uh, region of interest is about a 20 millimeter round circle that we use. And we ensure that the measurements are adequate by filling in the box with color. And I'll show you some examples of that. Uh, we measure the mean, maximum, and minimum stiffness. Uh, and they're in kilopascals. That's the, uh, I, uh, this may be very basic for some people here, but I'm sure that some people are not using elastography right now. So forgive me if I'm being a little too basic. Uh, the FDA has approved measurements, though, using velocity. So you can convert kilopascals and pascals into uh, velocity. And the formula is uh, KPAs divided by three, and you take the square root. And I actually did this myself, and it turns out to work out with the charts, but you'll see later. <laughs> okay, what about patients without hepatitis C? There was a very nice paper in AJR uh, published in September of this year uh, estimating liver fibrosis with shear wave elastography and trying to determine does the cause of liver disease or the location of measurement affect performance. And as it turns out that real-time shear wave elastography actually predicted significant fibrosis, which means Metavir score F2 or more, and I'll get into that in a minute, uh, in an unselected patient population with diffuse disease, including patients with and without hepatitis C. So that's important. Shear wave elastography best predicts pathologic rating when taken at the biopsy site or the ipsilateral lobe in hepatitis C patients. And the uh, important part of this paper was that the percentage of steatosis was not really predictive of shear wave elastography results. So the fact that the patients may have intervening fa uh, fatty liver didn't interfere with the results. Now, just a word about Metavira scores. They're the most widely used in clinical practice. They determine five stages of fibrosis, and they range from F0 to F4. You can read those for yourself. Obviously, uh, F0 is basically no fibrosis, and F4 is cirrhosis, and you have everything in between. Now, the way we classify the results of elastography using either uh, KPA or velocity uh, are based on cutoff values that have been done by various researchers. Um, these are the values that we use in our lab. Uh, they may be subject to change over time as we verify them with liver biopsies. But basically, uh, if uh, a score of F2 uh, or more, is, the cutoff is 7.1. For F3, it's 8.7. Uh, and for F4, it's 10.4. Uh, and you can see the corresponding velocities. Well, what are the advantages of shear wave elastography? It's easy, it's painless, and it's rapid. There's very good intra and inter -oper operator of repro reproducibility. The results are immediately available. Uh, shear wave is incorporated into a conventional ultrasound imaging unit, so both the assessment of fibrosis and the anatomical and morphological aspects of liver pathology and portal hypertension can be performed, along with looking for focal lesions. You can have a quantitative assessment of elasticity, and you can use it in KPA or uh, velocity, as we discussed. And you have visual control of the measurement location with the ability to avoid vascular structures, study regions of interest, such as tumors and focal steatosis, uh, and visualize the spatial distribution of fibrosis. You can correlate elasticity to the tissue architecture. Uh, you can study both the right and left lobes of the liver. And you can select measurement depth in areas free of artifact, avoiding vessels, uh, liver capsule, and focal lesions. And of course, you can choose the size of the cue box. This is an example of a normal liver. Uh, I believe the mean score is there in the 5 of 5.3. You can see where we measure about uh, 4 to 5 centimeters from the uh, liver capsule. You can see that the cue box is filled in nicely with color. It's a nice, uh, relaxing shade of blue. And you can see that that's a uh, normal liver and no evidence of fibrosis. Here's another liver that actually looks a little more echogenic. 
Uh, there may be some underlying steatosis, but again, it didn't affect the, uh, the scoring. Uh, this was also a uh, normal liver without fibrosis. Uh, this liver, you can see, is a little echogenic, maybe slightly heterogeneous. Uh, the score is 9.9. .9. This is obviously consistent with fibrosis. And I have several other examples of uh, livers with measurements that are increasingly uh, uh, higher, higher KPAs and increasing degrees of fibrosis and stiffness. Okay. This works in ascites as well. As you can tell on this patient, there is a significant amount of fluid around the liver. The liver capsule is, is irregular and nodular. And uh, of interest in this particular image is if you can see in the region of interest, there's a hypoechoic region. There's actually another one just outside the region of interest. Uh, those are focal liver lesions. And the liver lesions uh, are actually red or very, very stiff on the, uh, the uh, color map. And those represented hepatomas. Now, what about the all-important reimbursement for elastography? Uh, I just reviewed the policy that Aetna put out in Connecticut. Uh, Aetna is one of the many insurance companies that we have here in America, but many of them uh, follow each other's lead. Uh, Aetna considers elastography medically necessary for distinguishing hepatic cirrhosis from non-cirrhosis in patients with hepatitis C. The performance of elastography more than twice a year is considered medically unnecessary, so you can't do it more than twice a year and expect to possibly get paid for it. Uh, the performance of elastography within six months of liver biopsy is also not considered medically necessary. Elastography is considered experimental and investigational for all other indications, which uh, some of us may take exception to, but that's what the insurance companies uh, don't pay for. Uh, Aetna considers serum marker studies like Fibromax, Fibrospect, HCV, Fibrosure, uh, experimental and investigational. Uh, so they basically don't pay for that. Uh, and there is a CPT code, which is uh, listed below. Uh, it's a category uh, three code. So right now, we actually don't get paid uh, from Medicare on it. But we do get uh, paid from some of the insurance companies. Uh, when we do the patients, one way around not getting paid for the elastography, is we do a complete abdominal ultrasound in conjunction with it, and we bill concurrently. The good part about that is uh, my partners read the regular ultrasound. They send all the elastography to me. Uh, we charge the patient about $110. Uh, we're thinking about upping the charge because we're actually getting paid uh, $110 and not partial payment. Uh, a significant portion of the patient population that we have with hepatitis C is uh, traditionally Medicaid. As I mentioned, some patients pay out of pocket. And there are several insurance companies that actually reimburse up to our full charge. Now, we've also used shear wave imaging for uh, breast. And uh, breast ultrasound, as you know, is widely used for diagnosis. It evaluates palpable and mammographically detected masses, as well as non-palpable screening detected masses. Uh, there are breast density laws now in uh, Connecticut. And I see Nancy Capella here. And uh, we worked together on the Connecticut law. We were one of the first in the country to have such a law. We were actually also smart enough to include insurance reimbursement for the additional imaging. Uh, standard interpretive criteria versus via BIRADS ultrasound. We, we base it on margins, shape, orientation, interior characteristics, posterior acoustic features, and the effects on the surrounding tissue, such as edema or distortion. BIRAD's three lesions, as you know, are uh, basically 98% benign or more. Okay, so they should be at least 98% benign in your practice if you're calling it BIRAD's three, and there are very strict criteria to do so. Uh, usually, BIRAD's three lesions are complicated cysts or fibroadenomata. Now, BIRAD's four has a huge range of positivity, which really goes between two and 94%. Per, for, percent. So the goal of using elastography is to try to differentiate further between a BIRADS-3 and a BIRADS-4A, which is a minimally suspicious lesion, so as not to delay diagnosis of biopsy unnecessarily. Breast cancers, as you might imagine, tend to be very stiff or fibrotic, and benign lesions tend to be soft. But not everything reads the book. And we'll just go through a few of the caveats. Uh, when we do breast uh, elastography, 
We avoid compressing the breast as, st as uh, the stiffness can artificially increase. The shear wave technique does not depend really on uh, the, the, the strain elastography that some other manufacturers use because that's kind of dependent on the pressure that you put on the tissue. Uh, so we, we basically do uh, gentle compression and suspended respiration. We obtain two to three separate ac acquisitions, usually in one orientation, with the largest amount of t tissue contained in the ROI. We use qualitative assessment, basically looking at color maps. We don't really use uh, uh, the actual KPA or velocity values. Uh, blue is soft and red is stiff. Now you have to be careful because different manufacturers use different conventions. It's just like color Doppler. Not all blue are veins, not all red are arteries. So some manufacturers actually red are the soft lesions. But for supersonic, uh, the convention is red is stiff. We evaluate the adjacent tissue. You can get false positives and negatives. Uh, there are some stiff benign lesions such as radial scars, fat necrosis, and uh, periabscess inflammation or scarring. Uh, unfortunately, there are some soft malignant lesions, uh, maybe lesions that are less desmoplastic, that are uh, potentially very high grade, some DCIS, some tubular uh, carcinomas, uh, papillary and mucinous carcinomas, and uh, in the rare case that there are carcinoid metastases to the breast, uh, you may not get an accurate uh, assessment because they may be soft. There are many more false positives than false negatives. This is an example of a relatively large but classic lesion. You can see that it's uh, relatively homogeneous. There's good sound through transmission. Uh, it's very well defined, and you can see in the region of interest that it's blue. Uh, this was a palpable lesion, uh, which just turned out to be a benign fibroadenoma, as you might expect. Uh, this lesion is uh, fairly classic, so the imaging characteristics are such that you wouldn't be dissuaded about biopsying this, even if it turned out to be soft. You can see that the tissues around it are, uh, are, are, are red and uh, the shades of yellow and green. They would indicate some stiffness or desmoplasia. The lesion itself is taller than wide. You can see it's hypoechoic, and you can see that it's shadow. So this is a pretty classic invasive ductal carcinoma. This lesion actually uh, has some characteristics that you might consider uh, benign, but there's actually some microlobulation. When you take a look at it with the shear wave, you can see that there are areas that are red or stiff, and this was an invasive carcinoma as well. Other uses for shear wave elastography include thyroid. Uh, I have not done too much of this in my practice. Again, we use mostly the SRU criteria. Occasionally, some of the clinicians want us to use the ATA criteria for biopsy. But there are cases such as this which look pretty spongiform type lesions. They're not something that you would probably be that concerned about. And it's nice to have the confirmation with shear wave that it's a nice uh, blue soft lesion. Dr. Barr mentioned prostate, so I'm not going to mention much about that. I don't have that much experience in my practice. Uh, you can see that this actually does correlate with some of the imaging findings. There is a hypoechoic region in the left peripheral zone, which also turns out to be very red on the shear wave color map and was a prostate carcinoma. So in summary, shear wave elastography is a non-invasive, reproducible, and accurate method to assess tissue stiffness. Much has been and will be written about uh, the technique and how to best utilize this tool with refinement of criteria to add specificity. Reimbursement currently for hepatitis C because of the new treatment options also allows for non-invasive follow-up to assess response to the therapy and this has been the driving focus for our referrals. The potential impact to assist in breast lesion assessment, and when I do these cases, kind of think like color Doppler. You're really going to go by morphology. If the color Doppler looks benign in a lesion that's obviously malignant, you're not going to go by that parameter. And obviously, if a lesion looks uh, soft but it has malignant characteristics, it's not going to dissuade you from uh, biopsying. So the bottom line is, uh, for my practice, really, we would probably upgrade a BIRADS 3, maybe potentially downgrade a BIRADS 4, but I think we tend to upgrade more than we downgrade. Uh, and be aware of false positive and negatives. Uh, there are some newer applications, and a lot of literature is uh, going to come out in the future about thyroid, prostate, musculoskeletal, uh, the pancreas, perhaps, and lymph nodes. And with that, I thank you for your indulgence.